This is essential. <laughs> All right, yeah. there we go. There you go. We got them both in one shot. All right. Yeah. Good. Bird increases by five inches. So she's You can jump over the ceiling. All right, so zooming in. Okay. Good. All right, good shots to start off the lesson. So for the next one, e to the x, we're pretty familiar with this series, right? 1 plus x is x to the n over n factorial. That one you've done several times already. Cosine x, when you end up uh, getting your answer, uh, every other term cancels, right? So you're left with a 1 and then a 1 half x squared and a 1 24th x to the 4th and a 1 7 20th x to the 6th. What you end up with is x squared over 2 factorial, x to the 4th over 4 factorial, x to the 6th over 6 factorial, x to the 8th over 8 factorial, and so forth, right? How do you write that? Well, the alternating signs are just by negative 1 to the n. Right? Whenever you need to alternate the signs, just put negative 1 to a power. It's either going to be to the n or to the n plus 1, right? something like that. To get this, the powers to only be evens, right? where if you plug in a 0, you get 0. If you plug in a 1, you get 2. Plug in a 2, you get 4. Plug in a 3, you get 6. Just do it to the 2n. Okay, I'll raise it up there. All right. And then the factorial actually matches the power, right? x to the 4 over 4 factorial, x to the 6 over 6 factorial. So if this is x to the 2n power, it would be over 2n quantity factorial. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So here's the thing. Up until now, up until now, all of our series that we studied for convergence just had numbers and ends in them. Then we learned how to write these funky things called Taylor and McLaurin polynomials. Those have x's in them. If we rewrite those polynomials as a series, we now have series that have both x's and n's within the series. Oh, right? These series since they are a regular series with n's, multiplied by x to a power, right? That's why these are called power series. That's fun. Which brings us to the lesson today. By the way, if you had trouble with any of the homework problems last night, I put 57 and 53 on the smart board notes for tonight. So if you want to look at them, 53 is impossible to do with the knowledge that you are aware of at this point um, because you have to find the max of the n plus 1 derivative of natural log of x plus 1 right and the only you don't know which derivative because you don't know n right so um, you can't do that right now you have to use series and differentiate the series so because of that uh, the only way to do 53 is, do you remember I taught you that kind of cheating way yesterday? Right? Oh, That's how you do it. That's how you do it. So all you do, I didn't actually finish it off, but all you do is take your, your polynomial and then plug the 0.5 in, find the actual value, and then plug the 0.5 in until you hit enough terms that the approximation is less than 0 0.0001 away from the actual value. All right. So there you go. Oh, one more thing, and I'm going to put this on here. It's on video right now for all to hear. So Mr. Thomas shared something with me this morning. I'm so glad that he was back today uh, because I was talking to him about the error formula, right? Because I know you all had a, not an easy time with the error formula. It's not an easy formula. So. Uh, I mentioned to him about, it's called Taylor's Theorem, right? That formula. That formula is not Taylor's Theorem. The book makes it look like it's Taylor's Theorem. But Taylor's Theorem is actually just the part that says there's a Z that exists between X and C where that is the error. So Taylor's Theorem is just saying that there is a Z out there that exists. We can't find it, but it's there, right? 
The actual formula is attributed to Lagrange. So I know this changes your homework immensely, knowing the mathematician that's responsible for the formula, right? But here's how it's important is there have been problems on the AP exam where the college board said use Lagrange's error approximation formula to find the error. And he said that after like his first year of teaching, his students all came back and said, what's Lagrange, right? And uh, so then he had to research and find out. So he shared that with me. I'm so glad this morning. So that error approximation formula that we did yesterday is actually it's attributed to Lagrange, not Taylor. Okay. All right. Yeah, you will. Alright. Okay, power series. So today we're going to start power series. We're going to understand what a power series is, which you kind of already do. And we're going to find the radius and interval of convergence of a power series. Are you ready? No. No. I was doing this one like the other day and selected one. I was really confused. But you haven't been taught it yet. That's why he was confused. <laughs> All, right. All right. So anyway, I was confused. a power series is just a series that has an x minus c to the n in it. All right. So remember, x minus c. That's your uh, your x with your center where you've got your Taylor on the floor and polynomial, right? So this is that x minus c to the n. The a sub n does not mean numerical coefficient. It, it means the nth rule of a series. So if you remember, like prior to now, we would have a series. Oh, whoa. <laughs> okay. Oh. <Whoa. Yeah. laughs> prior to now, we would have a series, and it would just be this with the a sub n. A sub n just represents whatever the rule is for the series. It could be anything that has n's and numbers in it, right? So that a sub n is a series. Now we take that whole series, and we're going to tack on an x minus c to the n. That makes it a power series. Okay, so a power series has n's and x's in it. All right, and then of course, obviously centered at zero, you're just plugging the zero for six. All right, so all the series we found in the warm up are power series, including the cosine, because this can be, it doesn't have to be n, it can be 2n, it can be n plus 1, right? There's ways to, but you know, you get the idea. All right. There are two things we're going to be finding today. The radius of convergence and the interval of convergence. I will explain more clearly what these mean when we get into the example. All right, so right now, don't try too hard to figure out what they mean. It'll be much clearer when we do it with numbers. So the radius of convergence is Basically, it's a number that is all x's fall inside of for, for the series to converge. Basically, it's a radius, right? It's really more like this. But anyway, so the radius convergence. So this is the technical definition. If r is your radius of convergence, that means that the absolute value of x minus c will always be less than r. If that is true, uh, then the series will converge. The interval of convergence is some value, some number, plus and minus, where x falls in between. And it's really just a direct relation from this to this. Now, before we get into the problems, I want to make sure you know how to solve an absolute value inequality. We're going to do a simple one. I'm going to do it right here. Suppose the absolute value of x is less than 5. Yeah. That means x, I will rearrange the formula. x is less than 5, or x is greater than negative 5. Yeah. Does that ring a bell? That's one. Okay. So we can write that as negative 5 less than x, less than 5. In this homework tonight, in this lesson today, you are going to get about 10 million of these absolute value of x is less than number things. 
and just get used to being able to go from here to straight to there. All right. So all you do is take the positive and negative of the number, put it on either side of the x, drop the absolute value. All right. So we're going to write all. So for this one, if you look carefully, if we were to write this, drop in the absolute value, we'd have negative r less than x minus c less than r, and then if we add c. To all sides, look at that. It's just it's that, right? That's all they're doing. They're just taking that and solving it for x. Call them C A for some reason. But there you go. Okay. All right. So let's get into one with numbers so you can understand this. I'm going to walk you through this one slowly, step by step. Um, can we go back to the previous slide? I don't think we have our um, like interval of convergence. Sure. The interval of convergence is really just taking this and solving it for x and writing it as x in between some values. It's, it's kind of like taking the radius, dropping the absolute value, and writing it as an interval instead. The interval of convergence gets used way more than the radius of convergence. I didn't see radius of convergence anywhere in any of the examples. But I saw interval of all of the things. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. Is there a second one? Yeah, it's nothing. It's just This is just saying where it diverges. No one's ever going to ask you where it diverges. They're going to ask you where it converges. Yeah. What is it? What if it what? Like what if it equals? We're gonna talk about that. Don't worry, that that is in the plan today. Yes, good question. Equals are maybe it conditionally converges. That's my guess. All right, so we're gonna start with a simple power series three times x minus two to the n. something for a minute. If I take the x away and just have numbers, say I had the sum of 3 times 2 to the n without any x's, would this converge? No. no. Why not? Geometric. Geometric. It's a geometric series, the r is greater than 1, right? Okay, so here's what we're finding. Suppose I change that to and made it a half. Now would it converge? Yes. 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 Because now the r is less than 1, right? It's in between negative 1 and 1. So here's what we're finding with the interval of convergence. We're finding all the x's that we can plug in that will make this converge. So if I plug in x equals 10, whoa, it's not converging, right? It's going to diverge. But if I plug in x equals two and a half, hey, that one works, right? Okay, so that's what we're doing. When we're finding the interval of convergence, we're finding all the x values that we could plug into our power series to create a converging series. Does that make sense? You look skeptical, is that okay? Okay, good. Here's how we're going to do it. We are going to use the ratio test. You will be doing the ratio test in just about every single homework problem tonight. Yay, ratio test. Okay. Now, in case you've forgotten the ratio test, I wrote it over here on the board. And here's what it says. And you know what, I think I'm going to rewrite it here. <laughs> so that you can see it on the screen. So the ratio test says that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n must be less than 1 for the series to converge. 
Okay, that's the ratio test. All right. In addition to the ratio test today, we're also going to use a few other tests. We're going to use the nth term test, the alternating series test, and the p test. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Most of you know the nth term test, right? The nth term test says if you're just looking at your series right off the bat, if it doesn't, if the limit doesn't approach zero, it diverges, right? That's the nth term test. The alternating series test is the one that people got very confused with today. The alternating series test says if you have negative 1 to a power, if you drop the negative 1 and the limit approaches 0, it converges. If the limit doesn't, it diverges. That's only for alternating series. That doesn't mean for any series if the limit approaches 0, it converges. That's just if it's alternating, right? So we'll get into that more today. But the one that we're going to focus on right now is the ratio test. So here we go. Let's apply the ratio test. So we are going to start off by replacing our n with an n plus 1. So when you do the ratio test, you take the limit as n approaches infinity of the series with an n plus 1 divided by the regular series. are really nifty if you have things with powers, same base with powers, when you have the same base with exponents, subtract the exponents, right? When you're dividing 5 to the 3 by 5 to the 2, you're left with 5 to the 3 minus 2, right? 5 to the first. Okay, so here we go. x minus 2 to the n plus 1 over x minus 2 to the n is just x minus 2 to the first. All right, the 3's just canceled. Bam, they're gone. Does everyone understand how we got from here to here? Here's the trick. This is the limit as n approaches infinity, not x. n. All right? So you're not plugging an infinity in for x. You're plugging an infinity in for n. If there aren't any n's there, it would be the same as saying, hey, what's the limit as n approaches infinity of 5? It would just be 5, right? Right. So, the limit as n approaches infinity of x minus 2 is x minus 2. Does that, okay, good. I'm getting some good head knots. I like that. Where did you put that? Why did you put that value? Because that's part of the ratio. That's just your setup for the ratio test, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, ratio test, everything goes in an absolute value. That's really important. Now, I want you to think about what we know is required for the ratio test to have a converging series. In order for the series to converge, this limit has to be less than 1. Right? Now, take a close look at what we've got here. We have absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 1. Now, on the previous slide, we said, hey, if you get the absolute value of x minus c less than some number, that number has to be your radius. So, by the ratio test, we just naturally found the radius. It just pops out. Yes? So, in a, in a problem like this, how can we can just treat it like it were a, because uh, we know for the geometric series test, you know, x minus 2 has to be less than 1, can we just... You could use like geometric it? series for this one. But you won't be able to use geometric series for any of the other ones we're doing today. And the ratio test always works, so it's the traditional method used for series convergence intervals. Yay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, here's what we have. We have then, for the series to converge, the absolute value of x minus 2 must be less than 1, so our radius is 1. As soon as you get it in the format absolute x minus c less than number, that number is your r. Now we have to write this as an interval. When you convert to an interval, you just take the number, positive and negative, and put the x minus 2 in the middle. So now you drop the absolute value, write it as an interval. 
and then solve for x by adding 2 to both sides. This is not the final interval of convergence, but we're very close. Okay, who was it? Someone asked me, what if it's equal to the radius, right? What if it's equal? How do we know if it's going to converge or not, right? Here's how we're going to find out. We're going to plug each of these endpoints into the original series and determine convergence. All right? You have to test your endpoints. And that's actually one of the biggest parts of the AP exam on these problems is what they'll do is they'll give you for your choices, one is less than x is less than 3. One is less than or equal to x, which is less than 3. One is less than x, which is less than or equal to 3. One is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3, right? They want to see if you tested your endpoints. So you got to test your endpoints. So here's what you do to test your endpoints. The first endpoint is 1. So you just take 1 and you plug it in to your series. If you plug 1 into the series you, for x, not n, for x, these are x values, okay? You plug 1 in, you get 3 times negative 1 to the n. Somewhere down here it says that. There we go. 3 times negative 1 to the n. What convergence test do we use when we have negative 1 to a power? Alternating series. You could technically do geometric. You could. Or you could also do the term test. Okay. So. All right. Um, alternating series, but yes, you could also do geometric series. Yes. Okay. Does this pass or fail the geometric series? It fails. It fails horribly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, because for the geometric series to converge, it can't equal one or negative one. It has to be less than. Right? Okay, so this fails the geometric series test. If you use the alternating series test, you cover up the negative 1 and you just check the limit of what's left. If that limit doesn't approach 0, it diverges. Right? Alright, so this one diverges based on the alternating series test. Now you have to check your other endpoint. The other endpoint was 3. <laughs> so you plug a 3 into the original function, you get 3 times 3 minus 2 to the n, which is 3 times 1 to the n. What's 1 to the n? 1. 1. So you basically just get the sum of 3. Does the sum of 3 converge? No. No. Why not? Tell me a test. Okay, geometric, there's another one, someone said it, nth term, right? Yeah, nth term test, yeah. If the limit is zero, it automatically diverges. Alright, so anyway, so this one, I used nth term test. Therefore, since both of the endpoints diverge, our final interval does not include them, and it's just one to three. So I'm assuming we're going to have to find the like Taylor polynomial, then make a power series, then use the test. That's like that's putting it all together, which is the final. That's nine ten. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Like, that's, that's today you're just given the series, and you just have to find the interval. Oh, like that's the hardest part. Yeah. 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 Well, although well, nine nine is kind of a different thing. It's like stepping away from it for a little bit. Anybody know Yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So I want you guys to take a minute and find the, the radius and interval of convergence in this. The first thing that you do is you apply which test? Ratio, Ratio, Ratio test. test. Mm. It's really, they're really not bad. They, they don't go that long. Yeah. I know, it's Friday afternoon. It is. Thank you. 
Wait, but we did that. We put that in our calculator, but we forgot. Well, oh, whoa! You should do it. This is right. Oh, we're supposed to do something. Oh, yeah. Did you bring that call? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I was going to send it to you. I'm so sorry, Dylan. I was going to send it to you. Use ratio, bro. Use always start with ratio. Always start with ratio. Gracias. Yeah, you mean cheat? You can't take the square root. You cheat on a number. How do you cheat on a cup test? Are you going to start saying that? Oh, you're like an engineer? No, that's not stupid. By the way, it's genius. When you are doing your ratio test, if there is a negative 1 to a power, because everything's in an absolute value, the negative 1 is moved. Right? Because once you absolute valueize it, it's going to go away. Absolute value. So, yes. So, when, uh, so, the negative one, it doesn't matter what power is on it, when you're doing your ratio test, you don't have to write it. I don't think What? Can you just like change the negative one to a zero? Because like a negative one is less than x squared is less than one, but you can't take the square root of negative one. I got that as well. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So you all got to here. Okay. What is the absolute value of x squared? X squared. X squared, right? Okay. So you can drop the absolute value. Now you have a quadratic inequality. Just to save time, I'm going to tell you something, okay? If I have x squared is less than 9, that if you were to actually solve the quadratic inequality, which means that get everything on one side, find your critical numbers, make a sine line, and determine where the sine line is negative, right? And then write your answer. So this will actually end up equaling negative 3 less than x less than 3. So you just take the square root positive and negative, and put it on either side of the x. Okay? What was that? So this is negative 1 as well. Okay. So this doesn't actually end up being that same interval of negative 1 to 1. Okay, so what do you have to do now that you've got this interval? Are you done? What do you have to test? That's the end point. End point. That's disgusting. That's really not bad. I think it's going to work. It's so nice outside. It's, uh, the only reason why it's going is because of the media. Is it warm or warm? Well, it's supposed to be 65 by like 4. Yeah, it's 65. Like 31 when I got it. We should go to we should go to punch yeah, pizza. Like 4 a.m. morning job. Is that pizza pie? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have a gift card to punch pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you work out. I once had a student who brought the entire class. 4 a.m. It was actually 3:30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like hey, don't let like me. You had to do it. Don't let me. You have to. Yeah, yeah. Do you make it sound like? No, I don't. I only have like. Do you like jobs? Two dollars. Do you like jobs? 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 I have I have fifteen dollars to spend it on the way I wanted to contest. I wanted to play like a great.
Like, cool. I mean, we love the drawing. We like 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 the drawing. I, I don't. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we go. Find out. Uh, when you plug in a negative one, you end up with negative one to the n times negative one to the two n plus one over two n plus one. When you have negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the 2n plus 1, same base, different f, f, uh, exponents, you add your exponents. When you're multiplying, you add your exponents. So you end up with negative 1 to the 3n plus 1. What kind of a series is that? Alternating. Yeah, it's an alternating. I wonder if it's negative 1 to a power, right? It's going to be Unless it's like negative 1 squared. Right, okay. So anyway, yeah, so this is an alternating series. Alternating series, remember, whenever you have an alternating series, you cover up the negative 1 part and take the limit of what's left. Zero. Uh, as long as the limit of what's left approaches 0, then it converges, right? So for negative 1, we get this. When I was writing, I had written in plus 1, but it's just that. So anyway, you get this, which converges by alternating series. What about if you plug in the 1? If you plug in the 1, 1 to any power is just 1, right? Unless it's a 10. Okay, so anyway, so you just get negative 1 over 2n plus 1. Wait, but isn't it, isn't it infinitely? It, it's okay, it's just 1. It's just literally the number one. The time that it's not is when you have that one plus one over n, right? Then it gets all yeah. So anyway, all right. So yeah, one to n cars is one. So you end up with negative one to the n over two plus one. It's another alternating series, right? Oh, which still converges based on the alternating series test. Which means both endpoints work, and you end up with that. That's cool. Yeah. 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 Have you ever talked about the last three quarters? I like something like it. Oh, I had guys like. Check this. All right. Oh, my God. You can go online. You can go online. You can go online and just type in AP Calculus Multiple Choice and a PDF will pop up by the College Board that has like 30 some years of multiple choice tests in it. It's not all 30 years, it's, it's not 30 tests. They only publish tests like every 5 or 6 years, but it's all the ones that have been published from like 60 something to 90 something. So if you're ever looking for something to do, right, <laughs> you can go online, pull up the PDF of all the multiple choice for all the AP exams for like 30 some years and start doing them just for fun, for practice, right? So anyway, um, but the nice thing about having it available all together in PDF form is for me, it makes it easier to search for problems because you can do a find in PDFs, and so I did a find on series and a find on converge and all that kind of stuff, trying to see all the problems that were out there. They're very similar. So I just picked a couple. They're all very similar. I picked a couple, and I thought it might be fun for you guys to try a couple. That's so fun. here, let me make this big so we can see them all. Okay. Uh, so I want you to take a few minutes. And do these two <laughs> multiple choice problems. Yeah. Well, we have more to do after the last. Oh, we have other stuff. Does N have to start at sort of two hours? Okay. Is it right? 
This is Bryce. Oh, hey guys. There was just a question, does n have to start with zero? No. For convergence, n could start with 25. It doesn't matter. Uh, as long as uh, it, as you check for the x values for convergence, the n, it, as long as you're not trying to find a sum of a geometric where it has to start with zero, the n can start with any finite number as positive. I think it's I think it's yourself. Do you like it with your wife and be yourself? Oh, wait, wait, no. Pick up some weight for the, for the... Wait, 
It's the pink one. Wait, no, yeah, yeah. Because this has these on both sides. I can't rub it. No, they're there.